Hey kids, time for a bonus video. This is not math, this is writing. And so uh, in fifth grade and probably all the other grades, but at different levels, uh, you will have to write an opinion piece. And for us, we do a five paragraph essay. So I'm gonna give you a graphic organizer to help you organize your thoughts. And uh, it can start by taking a blank piece of paper giving yourself a, uh, a set of six boxes, okay? So blank piece of paper, you can do it on binder paper, set up six boxes. And now I'm gonna give you a few helpful hints on how to organize your thinking so that you can persuade someone uh, to believe you and that you are right. So in upper grades, you might call it argumentative writing. Um, and it, it just varies. Everybody's gonna have a different outcome, but this is a great way to help you think. Okay, it's an opinion piece. So in the very first box, I want you to put a slash, and you need to recognize who is your audience, okay? So you have to think about who you're talking to. It matters because if you're writing a friendly letter, you're gonna be, uh, talking to your parents, your grandparents, your friends in a casual register. If you're writing to your principal, you would write in a much more formal way. So you have to think about your audience and think about the types of words you want to use. Is it going to be casual? Is it going to be formal? And think about the grammar you will use with each. There should be no texting on this paper, okay? No texting. So once you have figured out your register for your audience, you need to hook your reader. So if you wanna think about uh, a little boat here, looks like it's sinking, oh dear, but it's okay. And so here you are sitting in the boat and you've got your fishing rod, whoop, and you're going to hook your reader. Okay, now it's very important to hook your reader. Now, teachers are gonna have to read your writing anyway, even if it's not very exciting, but you want to hook your reader and it's important to hook them with your very first statement. Okay, first statement. First thought, first question, first words that come out of your mouth and go down onto paper, you want to hook your reader with something that is strong and exciting or interesting, okay? So you want to be firm when you make your statement. You want to excite your reader, okay? Excite the reader, take a stand, okay? Now, these are things that you can think of, and if you were uh, writing your own uh, opinion paper or argumentative paper, you could have your first box and write to whom you are going to address your piece of writing, and then here you could actually write your first statement. So you can just slash it, to whom, and then write your first statement. So that's your graphic organizer. It's a way to arrange your thoughts. What is this box for? This is going to be your strong statement part two, okay? Strong statement part two. In your opening paragraph, you can't just say one thing and then leave it. And also, you do not want to say because. Do not say because in your very first statement. Don't say, I think dogs are the best pets because they lick my face when I come home. Do not give reasons. In your first statement, you wanna say what your opinion is and leave it. Say it and leave it, okay? Take a stand. Dogs are the best pets ever. I know all the cat lovers are like, no, no, it's cats. Okay, cats are the best pets ever. Whatever you think, just you wanna make your claim and stick to it. So why this? Because the introductory paragraph is so important. You wanna have as much 
behind you as possible. So strong statement part two should start with something like, in addition, da, 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 da. in addition to the fact that dogs are the best pets ever, um, they're also known for being, uh, they can raise your spirits if you are sick or whatever it is. So you want to give an additional fact to support your opinion. Okay, so strong statement part two, we don't just stop with one sentence. You have to have a second sentence to back up your claim. Okay, your final statement, let's say in fifth grade, you can only think of three things to say. Here's sentence one, here's sentence two. Sentence three is going to wrap up your first introductory paragraph, two boxes. Wrap up with... Something strong like, there's no way, and also if you use contractions, uh, it weakens your argument, so you can not use contractions if you'd like. There is no way that blank is better than, don't forget it's A there, not E, than this. and. You can go on, you can expand on this, but basically it's first sentence, additional sentence, wrap up your introductory paragraph with something else. It just says, there's no way that you're gonna convince me that cats are better than dogs, or there's no way that uh, dogs are better than cats because I firmly believe this and la la la, and the statistics will bear this up. Now, what are the other boxes for? If this is paragraph one, two, three, four, five, or two, three, four, five. Anyway, we'll get into that. So it's really flexible. Writing is not an exact science. So box three, what do we do here? This is gonna be the body, okay? But it's only gonna be about two paragraphs Uh, in a five-paragraph essay, you only have to have five paragraphs. So if this is the paragraph one, this could be two and three. So what you want to have would be supporting details to help bolster your argument. So you're going to have supporting facts. Okay? Now your supporting facts, you're going to... You should be passionate when you write, Okay? So it's going to be your fact one, fact two. If there's any way you can tie those together, make a connection, okay? You may have more facts for another paragraph. And so you want to be able to tie these things together to help your writing flow. So these supporting facts are going to come from you, your passion, what you strongly believe, okay? Um, for example, we did uh, some writing recently, and it was about uh, what would be better, or which one would you choose? Would you give up technology for a year, or would you give up desserts for a year? And so it's like you just have to make the commitment and say, oh my gosh, what would I do? And... Uh, and we'll talk about uh, pros and cons at the end of this. I'll show you a quick little list of how we, we decided to do that. So your, your body paragraphs are going to be you and your passion supporting your opinion. How about the next paragraph? Paragraph four is going to be <clears throat> you're looking at the fact that people will not always agree. So this is what's called a counter point, okay, counterpoint awareness. So basically you're saying, I know people aren't going to agree with me. Okay, if you choose dogs are the best pets or dogs are better pets than cats, you have to acknowledge that some people are going to believe that cats are better. And so here in this box, this is where you organize your thoughts and you address these concerns. So you want to poke holes in the opposing argument. OK? 
okay? Poke holes in the opposing argument. Um, you know it's going to be there. So you want to have three to five sentences in general that will address what the uh, opposing opinion will say, okay? Um, cats uh, are less predictable than dogs. Cats love to scratch if they get annoyed with you, and dogs are, if they scratch you, it's just because they love you so much, <laughs> okay? Just whatever it is. But you want to aware, be aware that there is a counterpoint and address it with three to five sentences. So talk about the things that make... Um, your argument better and your side better because you're going to talk about all the bad things that they're going to try to uh, address, okay? Now, this is not a paragraph. This is a reminder. When you have an opinion piece of writing, you need to not just have the passion you don't just have the heart from this writing. You don't just look at, I feel this way, I feel this way. Feelings are nice, but they are not going to win arguments. You need to use statistics. You need to do research. Even my fifth graders just went on Google. They went on Wikipedia. They went, I mean, even though sometimes Wikipedia is not as reliable, you can use certainly all the other websites. But do a little research. If you were to pop a couple of studies in your writing, studies show that people who own dogs are 27% happier than people who do not have pets. Wow, that's a great statistic. And I just made that up, so I really have no idea. But you have to use statistics to... Um, to get people to truly, truly believe you. Now, you don't have a whole paragraph full of statistics. That's not what this is for. You're going to use statistics in fact one. You're going to use statistics in fact two. Use statistics in facts three and four. Do research for addressing the opposing argument. Find statistics to bolster your argument versus your opponent's. Okay, so this is a reminder to use statistics. You can do research, find surveys, and then you want to sprinkle all these facts, not opinions, you sprinkle actual facts throughout. Okay, your whole uh, paragraphs two, paragraphs three, paragraph four. Okay. Now, conclusion. All good writing has a great intro and a great conclusion. Okay, so you have your introductory paragraph and you have your concluding paragraph. This is a little bit more formulaic for kids. And what I mean by formulaic is that if you follow these steps, it'll usually wrap it up in a nice way. First of all, you need to restate your opinion. You want to do that with your strong statement, restate it. You don't copy it exactly, but you restate it almost in the same way. Restate your opinion, your strong statement. You should remind the reader about your, what I would say, strongest or favorite fact. Okay, remind the reader about your best fact from up here. Pick one, the best one, and then restate that one as well. Not in the exact same way, but very similar. Three and four are a nice way to, you want to encourage others to agree. Okay, it's like, hey, I'm not the only one who feels this way. Okay, so you want to say that clearly. And finally, your final statement, once you have done all this stuff and you have people that are on your side and they believe you and you have a strong argument, you want to urge others to take action. Okay, so go out there and adopt a pet today. Okay, or go home and tell your parents that... Uh, 
you want to have a dog too. Something like that. It's whatever. You know, go write to your, your senator and uh, get them to, you know, take action on your behalf, whatever your topic is. So this is a nice graphic organizer that you can use for pretty much any type of persuasive writing, argumentative writing, and you can use it at any grade level uh, because even at simple grade levels, you'll simplify all these things. Um, and at higher grade levels, it will be really, um, you'll really go to town with the statistics and the supporting facts. So I hope this is very helpful. Click subscribe if you guys feel like uh, it's beneficial and come back for other videos in the future. See you on the next one.